Hey, hi, and howdy, sweet friends. Welcome back to my channel, and welcome if you're new. My name is Courtney, and I am a stay-at-home homeschooling mom. And here on my channel, I like to focus on food and kitchen content. I do grocery hauls and lots of different cooking videos. So if you like that, and I feel like you must because you're watching one of my cooking videos right now, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button, stick around, check out my playlist, and drop me a comment. So this week, the meals I am cooking are three meals from my video that I did earlier in the week on beating a grocery budget. I originally wanted to do four, but we had so many leftovers and uh, we also had one night where my husband and I went out to dinner, so I only ended up cooking three of the meals. But they were all so good and these are very budget friendly. You can watch my previous two videos on the grocery budget challenge that I did for myself this time. I will link them down below. Um, but I just picked these three um, that I knew were going to be awesome. They were going to use up some stuff in my fridge and freezer and things like that. We're going to kick it off with Mongolian beef. I've got a pound of ground beef and I just kind of crumbled it up and let it brown for a couple of minutes. And once it was crumbled the way I liked it, I added in some diced veggies from my fridge. I had some leftover cabbage in there. I had some onions in my fridge and some leftover carrots. You could use frozen veggies. You don't have to add veggies at all. In fact, the real recipe that I'm linking down below, I don't think it calls for any veggies. I just find this is a great way to use up some extra stuff that's just kind of hanging around in my fridge or freezer. Plus, it just adds a little extra, you know, vitamins and stuff with some veggies in your dish. So once I toss those in there, because mine are fresh veggies, I want to give them just a couple of minutes to kind of cook down before we do anything else, especially the carrots because they are pretty um, hard right now. I don't like them to be mushy, but I wanted to give them a few minutes to really kind of start to cook a bit. I'm also adding in some garlic powder and some ginger. You'll notice I didn't add any garlic in here. I'm adding my confit garlic. Um, and just because it's so much easier, I'm just tossing in some garlic powder. We all have that on hand, right? And like I said, some ginger, you can do fresh, you can do the stuff in the fridge. I just use the powder, ginger, and then of course some pepper. Gotta have some pepper in here just to kind of spice it up. You could add some red pepper flakes uh, if you want to, if you want it spicier. I'm just kind of stirring it around. You can see there's really not much in the way of liquid in the bottom of here. The veggies kind of soaked up the little bit of grease I had from the ground beef while they were cooking, which is perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little of my sesame oil for flavor and then a little bit of hoisin sauce because that's all I seem to have left in that bottle is just a little bit, uh, just for some also added flavor. I love this stuff. This is a pantry staple for me. If you guys don't keep hoisin sauce in your kitchens, I really advise it because it is so great in marinades and Asian inspired dishes and so on. I also added in some soy sauce. You could also substitute some coconut aminos, I think they are. I just use regular soy sauce and it was in my grocery haul. It is very affordable at Walmart. And then I added in a couple of tablespoons of brown sugar. I think the recipe said like three to four tablespoons. So I did three, just giving that a good stir. You could use white sugar if you don't have any brown sugar. You could use honey. I've used honey in the past and I think it tastes really, really good. So this has kind of come together and the recipe calls for some chicken broth or beef broth, which is not anything I have on hand. I always just use bouillon. I like it just because it is very long lasting in your pantry and pretty versatile. So I just added in some of my bouillon powder and a little bit of water and we're going to give that a stir and let everybody just kind of simmer together in the pot for a couple of minutes just to make sure that our veggies have cooked the way we want them. Now this is kind of a stir fry dish so I still want a little bit of Christmas to the veggies um, but I do want to give those carrots a chance to really kind of cook down a bit. And then finally, I'm gonna add a cornstarch slurry, which is just a couple of tablespoons of water and a couple of tablespoons of cornstarch. And I just slowly add mine in while stirring just to make sure that it's getting incorporated really, really well. And you can see it thickens up right before your eyes. Now, a lot of people serve this dish over rice. On this particular night, I had a bunch of extra ramen packets. So I sprinkled some of that stuff right there. You could just do sesame seeds or nothing else. It's just something I had in my pantry. Sprinkled it on top and served it with some ramen noodles. And I had, some pot stickers in my freezer. So I went ahead and used those up as well just to kind of get them out because they've been in there for a long time. It was a very good meal. And again, I'll list the original recipe below. All right, let's do some easy weeknight chicken fajitas. This is a favorite of mine. I've done these a couple of different ways over the years. Originally, I think I came across a pan or a, an oven style uh, chicken fajita, which is really good. I've done air fryer. Those are easy. You just put your chicken on your cookie sheet or your tray for your air fryer and then put your peppers and onions on top and then let them cook so all the juice from the veggies kind of drains down and seasons the meat. If you're looking for super quick though, I really like this skillet style. 
So I cubed up a couple of chicken thighs there. I added a little bit of garlic oil in there just to kind of help get all over the chicken. And then I added some lime juice. You could do lemon juice. I really like lime when it comes to fajitas. I just feel like it has such a good flavor. And then we wanna kind of season this. I'm adding in some salt and some pepper, lots of pepper. I really like a lot of pepper on the skillet chicken. It just has a really great flavor that I think it brings to the table. And I'm keeping it pretty simple with just some garlic powder and onion powder, but you could always add in any seasonings that you want, or maybe you wanna add in some taco seasoning or something. I like it pretty simple like this, so that the flavor from the peppers and the onions really shines through, and it has an amazing, amazing flavor. Now, grilling chicken fajitas is really the way to go. It's the best way to go. You're gonna get the best flavor. They're gonna taste the most like the restaurants, but we're doing easy weeknight, so we're gonna do it in the skillet, and this is still a very, very tasty recipe. Now, personally, I like to throw a little dash of Worcestershire sauce in there, but you don't have to do that. I just like what it brings. It just kind of amps up the flavor a little bit, but it's not totally necessary. Just make sure that all this is kind of stirred around your chicken and then set it to the side, and we're gonna dice up some veggies and give that a few minutes to come together. I'm just using one small onion and a handful of well, some leftover bell pepper from some veggies and dip, and then a couple of baby bell peppers from my fridge. I put a little oil in my skillet, and we're gonna get these guys started sauteing. We wanna give them a little bit of a head start so that their flavor gets in the pan and into everything, so when we add that chicken, it can absorb all that beautiful flavor from the peppers and onions. Now, I've seen people put all kinds of veggies in here, so you really can if you want to. I've seen mushrooms and zucchini and all kinds of stuff, but when I go out to eat down here in Texas, um, typically what we see is bell peppers and onions. And some places will throw in some charred jalapenos. If you want to go for it, it does taste amazing. Uh, the reason I don't do that is because I have kids in my home that don't do spice. So I just kind of try to keep that stuff to a minimum around here. I am gonna go ahead and season these veggies with some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. I am really missing my confit garlic, but it did kind of happen at the perfect time since I was working on this uh, grocery budget meal plan and video that I did all throughout the week uh, because not all of y'all have confit garlic, but garlic powder is very affordable and most people have that in their kitchen. So it actually worked out pretty well. I will be making some more of that though. I am so ready to have it back in my kitchen. It is by far definitely my favorite condiment. It kind of takes some of the harshness off the garlic and I love that because you get that deep roasted flavor. I always have that video linked down below in my description box if you're interested in making it. So I've just tossed in my chicken. It's been sitting for about 15 minutes, just kind of soaking up all the flavor I put in the bowl. And I'm just gonna cook this and leave it alone, really. I'm gonna put it in the skillet and let it cook for quite a few minutes. I'll flip it over and let it cook for quite a few minutes and I'll do that two more times. So it develops some browning and toastiness and deliciousness. Because when I go get fajitas anywhere here in Texas, they are always like flame kissed. There's a little bit of char, there's a lot of color. It's so good. It's harder to achieve that in your kitchen. Uh, the places that we go to typically do it over like an open fire but I was able to get some of it and man, these were absolutely perfect. I served it with whole wheat tortillas. You can do some Spanish rice, rice aroni. I just made some homemade rice, a can of beans, and I had some salsa in my fridge. All right, the last meal of the week was chicken spaghetti. This one I don't make very often and I really don't know why. Um, it's not something I ate growing up really, but my mother-in-law used to make it quite a bit. In fact, when I had, I think it was my last, my youngest son, I called her from the hospital and asked her to make me some chicken spaghetti when I got home because that's all I could think about was how much I wanted her chicken spaghetti. So this is kind of my take on it with a few alterations just for stuff that I have on hand and things that we use. So I've got some chicken tenders here. I pulled that annoying little tendon thing out with the fork trick so they're kind of like, you know, beat up a little bit, but that's cool. I seasoned them just with some badia complete. You can season them with whatever you want, but we're putting them in chicken spaghetti. I just wanted a little bit of flavor. I've got some baking grease in my skillet. You can use oil, you can use butter. I just have a bunch of it in my fridge. So I try to remember to use it sometimes because I have it and it's free because I've already, you know, cooked the product that it came with. It's just a fun byproduct. So I'm using it today to add some extra flavor. I'm just gonna cook those chicken tenders until they're cooked through and a little bit golden brown for flavor. A lot of people will boil their chicken for chicken spaghetti. I just feel like it kind of has a really bland flavor. Not a big fan of boiled chicken personally. So typically I will just kind of alter any recipe and cook my chicken in the skillet for a little bit of extra flavor. And I just think it, it tastes so good and it only takes a couple of minutes to do this. It's probably faster to do this than to boil chicken if I'm being honest. But if you want to, go ahead and boil your chicken. It's all good. You could even use canned chicken. That's cool too. 
All right, so I've pulled my chicken out of the skillet. We've got that bacon grease with some of the chicken bits left in there. I'm gonna toss in just half of an onion. If you have a small one, that's perfect. Mine was a little bit on the bigger side, so I just did half of it. And we're gonna get that onion sauteing now. Just kind of keep it moving. I'm not gonna worry about cooking it all the way through, but I do wanna soften it a bit before we move on to creating our sauce for our chicken spaghetti. Now I'm making mine more from scratch. My meal plan called for cream of mushroom soup, which is more traditional. Uh, typically I just kind of shy away from that and I've been making my own for a while and I prefer it that way. So that's what you see me doing now. I've got some dehydrated mushrooms. I just buy them at the store, chop them up, put it in my food dehydrator and keep them on my shelf. And then I just pop them in dishes like this so I can make cream of mushroom soup with my cream of soup base which I also made here on my channel and I'll link that video down below as well. It's just like a dry goods for your pantry video where I made a bunch of different um, spice blends and seasonings and stuff like that. But if you don't do that, if you're using the canned stuff, go ahead and add your can of cream of mushroom soup. I've added my dehydrated mushrooms, my cream of soup base, and a little bit of extra bouillon powder. I'm actually using beef bouillon powder to amp it up a little bit because I think it has more flavor than chicken, but you can go either direction. And then I'm just gonna stir in my water and this makes my cream of mushroom soup. You could use cream of anything soup, really. Down here at HEB, we can get cream of poblano soup, and I always tell myself I should try that for this because I think it would be fantastic, and I never remember. So I'm gonna try my best to do that in an upcoming video, just make my own cream of poblano soup because I think it'd be fabulous. So you can see this is thickening up pretty quickly. There is a thickening agent in the cream of soup base, just like that, it kind of all comes together and it is so, so good. Now, if you're using cream of mushroom soup, go ahead and stir in probably about half a cup of chicken or beef broth to thin it out a little bit, uh, just so that your sauce is a little bit more saucy. So we've got all these ingredients in here. Everything's coming together nicely. Chicken spaghetti typically has cheese in it. I would really recommend shredding a fresh block of cheese, but I was in a hurry. I didn't have a lot of time. We were super busy this day. So I took a little help from the grocery store and just used some pre-shredded cheese and it worked out fine. It melts into this beautifully. I've turned the heat off before I put the cheese in there. So it just really gets nice and creamy and delicious. And you can see it's melting perfectly. So I got very lucky. I do like the Lucerne brand. I find I have better luck with that than a lot of the other brands. It is definitely my favorite. Now for my recipe that I listed the other day in my grocery haul, I called for a can of Rotel, which I don't typically use. I use this tomato salsa I buy at Walmart. I had some in my fridge because I used it for something the other day. So I just put in about half a can because this is really liquidy. If you're using Rotel, drain the can and then add in all those beautiful diced tomatoes and green chilies. That flavor is amazing in here. Give it a good stir. I'm adding a little bit more because I could just tell I need a little bit more. Like I said, I did about half a can and this is what I'm using is closer to a salsa than Rotel. And I have chopped slash shredded my chicken because it kind of just fell apart. I'm adding that back in there and we've got this beautiful base. It's the sauce for our chicken spaghetti. I've got noodles cooking right next to this in another pot and I'm just gonna bring them right on over with my noodle scoop. I wanna get some of that pasta water in here. I'm gonna make sure that I have some on hand because this sauce thickens really, really well. We might need to kind of thin it out a little bit. So make sure you save a little bit of pasta sauce if you drain your noodles so you can add it in here to thin the sauce out. And we're just gonna give this a real nice stir. This is almost one pound of pasta. I am two small bowls shy of one pound because my kids asked for butter noodles. So they each had a small helping of butter noodles with some applesauce on the side and the rest of it is in this pot. So it's probably like three quarters of a pound or so. And I'm just stirring it really, really well. Work it in there because it is a thick sauce and get it in between all these noodles. This is so, so good. You're gonna love this one. I will list the recipe down below for you guys. I really hope you make it because it's fabulous and it's so easy. This came together in 30 minutes. That was it. All right, those are the meals this week. They're very budget friendly and they do follow my plan from the other day. I'll link that video down below as well. I hope you guys are having a fabulous weekend and I wish you the best week ahead. I will see you guys on Tuesday for my grocery haul. Have a great one. Bye.